So folks, I'm here to talk about basically what's going on in our health farm up, up in here. All right. uh, as you're probably aware, we have now for a good 15 years had a three breed rotation of our health farm involving shorthorn, angus and limousine. And it's pretty much focused on producing replacements. That, that would be the key uh, driver in our breeding decisions. So tonight I'm just going to talk through sort of some of the tools that we have, some of the information that we've used, some of the decisions that we've taken and can share them with you. And I'm going to jump straight in by saying because we're on basically the focus on the heifer side, we do quite uh, a bit of work on, on the selection of our heifers. And in, in terms of what we are keeping, we're, we're basically looking at heifers born in the first two cycles. Now that's quite simple because first two cycles should be more fertile cows, so we would hope that would come through in the heifers. We also are keen to check the cows. We want to make sure that there's no issues that we will be breeding in going down the line. And I'm sure you should all the same. If you're hardly going to keep heifers out of terms with big trippy bags and, and, and all the teeth all problems like that. You definitely should try and avoid anything that's coming from uh, as well, and we're no different. We will also then look at the uh, winning time and look at the winning weights. Uh, we've always had a debate about this, and it may be a theme coming through my talk. I quite like the middle of the road. I'm not necessarily a big mouth for big heavy ones, but everybody likes to develop big heavy ones. But uh, we definitely get rid of the wee small ones, that, that's for sure. Then we also look for any structural soundness. In terms of uh, mostly locomotion, legs and feet. And then when it comes to the, the AI and the process and that, it's talking about, you know, again, we're looking at weights and we're also looking at frame size. You know, weight's only a part of it. Uh, you also want to make sure you have length and, and, and breadth, etc. So that's with regards to the, 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 what we do on, on the heifers. To help us, we use Matthew's Opus program. I don't know if any of you come across it. And these are our excess bogus. Right, that's free. And uh, we would use it to monitor the growth of our heifers, just to ensure that you know, our nutrition and our management is up to scratch as, as well as the, the, the genetics. And you can see some targets there that, that we use. Now, the one big thing when we started two year old carbon of our heifers was most people said that we stunt it. And, uh, that, that hasn't been the case. Uh, this is a, a graph showing heifers, or basically cow weights of, of uh, cows that were calved down at two year old and cow weights that were calved down at three year old. And as you can see, a two year old just yes, later, one take us up a rocket science to work that out. But they do gradually increase at three year old up to four year old, and by the time they're five year old, but they're up around 700 kilos. So they're probably 40 now. You know, that's what We'll discuss that later. Uh, and that's pretty much similar to the ones that were cut down a three year old. Uh, within, and that, that's just that out of our own herd up at the hill. So, you know, there, we'd never had an issue with, with, with stunting uh, as such. Now, just then, I'll flip over and I'll, I'll move on to what goes through our minds, uh, which is probably quite boring, but what goes through our minds in terms of uh, bull, bull selection. And I suppose I just want to say, Francis had mentioned the, the survey there that Afghan undertook, and it is always reassuring for your career that whenever stuff comes back from a survey, that it tallies up with what you spent the last 15 or 20 years talking about. And that, that was quite clear that the people in the survey who had used EBVs when selecting uh, bulls and sires rather than visual appearance, so basically they went from the figures as probably more so or as well as the visual side, that they had a reduced calving interval of 17 days. The dairy then the cow for 17 days reduced calving interval was worth, worth, worth a lot of money. It's no difference to use men, so it's something to be cherished. And also a lot less cows had extended calving intervals. And again that's very important. So overall if you use EBVs and performance information you have improved fertility. And that, that's the key message. Uh, ideally, you combine uh, the, the EBVs and, and the visual assessment. Also, just have a couple of slides here, because we, we would use the, the 
tool is tools uh, to assess just how your bows are doing. And if you can access it, you can go in and you can see information for all the bows that you've used in your herd. And you can see how the calves have also gone within your herd, uh, going, even if you sold them on to other people. So there's a wealth of information there if, if you can uh, record your sire information. And that's really what I wanted to, to get down to here. Whenever you're in Yesus and you're, you're doing your birth registration, there's a wee box here that says add sire information. And it'd be great if you could now, uh, because we'll hopefully be able to use a lot of this information going forward. And it shouldn't be two owners, there should be a drop down in this there of stock bulls on the farm. And if there's not, you can put in the year number of the bull that you know. And it, I'm not saying you're going to get them all down in a, a period of maybe you pull the bull out and put a bull in and sure enough, if you get half of the, the cows by sire, that would, would be fantastic for more part of you, just keep with that information in the system. Just think of the hours of end of spawn for us as we can have interrogate and all that data going, going forward. Uh, if you're not using stock and you're using AI, there's codes, stick in the code for the AI. And uh, not only is it good for us, but then, you know, in two or three years' time, you can see how them calves have performed uh, against the actual, the actual goal. Right, so I'll flip back now to to our thought process at Hillfarm. I'm going to start to run around 2011, 2012. Uh, we always have to set criteria, but it has to be fairly black and white. There's none of this sending somebody away to kind of buy a bill that you might sort of like. You know, it just doesn't happen unless you don't have that choice. So there's a kind of criteria, and there's normally you're not allowed to go over that amount of money. So we sat down and we worked through these criteria. And we were quite simple. When we were looking for a bull for a hill farm, milk was key and muscle. Growth was in there, but it wasn't a priority, to be, to be honest. Uh, it's just something to keep, keep in mind. But milk and, and, and muscle is the two key things. Uh, and in 2013, I think it was Sterling that was going, so they had it over and they bought this chap. Charles and Emer, and uh, he met our criteria extremely well. He was good for milk and good for muscle. Now we could see all this information, not only in the catalogue, but if you go onto any of the breed websites, you'll generally get a wee box up in the right hand corner that says data base or performance information. Click in there, and uh, if you're looking at particular bulls or that, just put in the name, and all that information is in your fingertips. So you can go with, with that uh, and have, you know, narrow it down to those that you're looking for. So we sent him over probably four or five bills. This boy was ideal, but be aware, he's a young bull. I wanted to make sure he was all fully recorded, so we have details along the bottom that says about birth weight, yes, 200 day weight, 400, 600, scrubal uh, circumference, fat, etc. so we've been scanned. So we were, we were fine with him there. It was as good as we were going to get for a young bull. This is him now. Uh, he's still a good little bull, but his figures have changed a wee bit. But I would like to say, by good design, his milk has held up. He has moved up now that he's almost in the top 10% of the breed for milk. And that was the key thing we were really after for the breeding, the breeding replacements. His muscle area has stayed up reasonably well uh, too, so it has, and we're, you know, but really the milk is the, the main one. Mm -hmm. Then, in terms of the heifers, I just wanted to take a, a minute or two and set up with slightly different criteria for the bulls that we use in our heifers. Obviously, they yourselves, we don't want to produce a heifer and then destroy her in the calving, so there's different priorities uh, that we have. And you know, top 25% or better for a short gestation length. Uh, basically, that's, that's the period between conception and birth. So we're looking for something that's fairly short, a couple or three days, see if they are would be good. It has to be easy cabin, like at the end of the day, it just must be easy cabin. These are cabin down to two year olds, can't take the chance. And ideally a low birth weight as well. So when we're looking at the bulls that we're using on heifers, we need them to be proven. So just buying a young bull and throwing them in could be a bit dodgy, let's be honest. We, we, we 
would rather be a bit more secure in terms of, of what's going to happen there in our own mind. So we do tend to use AI, and there's the building that we can use quite a bit of, another term in Americano. And look, again, the figures are available through, through the website, the Angus in this case, Easy Cabin, one of the 12 volts, one of the trail leaders. Uh, short gestation length and light birth weight. And the great thing about this chap is not only was he weighed and scanned, but he has been used in 156 birds. There's 550 progeny assessed uh, and, and 80 of them have been scanned. So an ideal bull for what we need in, in our heifers. But did you notice anything about the two the two bulls that we've used, just for a bit. This boy here, his daughters aren't particularly easy to calve. And if I flip back to this chap, his aren't particularly easy to calve either. So, <clears throat> for us breeding heifers and breeding cows in the future, that's two bulls we've used that's particularly hard to calve, uh, or sorry, our daughters, would be particularly hard to calve. So, we have to focus on that. Now the point I'm trying to make is, four or five years ago we were looking for milk and a bit of muscle. Now we were looking for Cabernet's daughters, so it had changed. Like if you're going out today looking for the same traits as you were looking for five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, I would question why. Because things have changed, things have moved on. You know, and the traits that you need are probably different than the traits that your neighbour needs or whatever as well. So you should look at what's, what's going on in terms of your own herd, uh, find the latest information. So the, the bull that we bought, that, that Beamer bull, he was actually not bad for Cavalier's daughters when we bought him. Now he's, now he's not so good, so we had to take that, that on board. So find the latest information. Just because the uh, AI uh, man and the old man told you he was a great bull five years ago, he could have changed. So, so be wary of that. Uh, review what, what is going on if you're still doing the exact same uh, things with regard to you still breeding replacements. Review what's going on in the big picture. Uh, a lot of the information we're getting at the moment is about the carcass size. So if you've also noticed most of the bulls we've used have been very high for growth. That's that would be starting to cons uh, be a concern of mine. So I would be putting in the back of my mind we don't need to worry so much about, uh, about growth. And when that all comes together, then we need to use that information, make, make, make a call, make a decision. So we required our next bull to be good for Cavanese daughters and by good design. But a good design. This chap, we purchased him a couple of years ago or, or that, and he is easy for, for his daughters. So his daughters will have easy. Now, you know, we'd used those hearts for a couple of times. This is, this is one coming through easy. So hopefully that will keep a balance in the herd. Like at the end of the day, genetics is about balance, it's about blending genetics together. You know, you just can't break for the same thing. Uh, over and over again. But again, look, this boy's heavy. The other boys were all heavy. My concern is that our cows are starting to get, but they're not starting to too big. You've seen Francis' presentation there. Uh, carcass weight is going up. And I think you talked about a ton of silage more to keep. Uh, a sucker pile well, that's possibly fine and kind of down, but when you're going to worry that it would be two ton of silage, Two and a half ton of silage uh, with a long winter. So we need to focus on cow size uh, and, and we'll need to keep an eye on that. I've also a concern that our carcass weights will be too big for the market and probably whether they were fleshy enough or whether they were covered enough with fat will be starting to be a concern too. Uh, again, things have moved uh, in terms of what the market requires. So just on the carcass, or, or on the, the, the cow weight side, this was just to put up, this is the information we have found from our own herd, that there's absolutely no relationship between cow size and winning weight. 
You know, we've cows there, 750, 800 kilos, winning pretty much a similar calf to one at 550, 600. So, this concept, I think, is beautiful. It ain't going to be working for us. Possibly when the cows was 450, 500 kilos, there was a need to increase them. But when they're 750, 800, not anymore. And I remember when I came into this business, I was told, watch the trends in America. And at that time, they were starting to talk about meat quality. And uh, we were just about starting to move towards short oil and towards Angus. Well, the trends in America now is more towards 250 kilo carcasses. So, you know, if, if that's the way it's going to start and go, and uh, I'm interested, you know, we'll here in 20 years' time, what sort of cattle will be talking about. Uh, and that's me. Thank you for listening.